Okay, let's revisit the circumference problem. Um, it says use parametric equations to find the circumference of a circle of radius r. So we have to figure out in parametric form what a circle of radius r will look like. So we know just a basic circle centered at the origin, um, let's say a unit circle. We can look at cosine theta and sine theta. That would be the unit circle because the coefficient here is 1 for both sine and cosine. But if I'm looking at radius r, I'm just going to make it r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. And also, um, since I'm choosing just theta and not n theta, I, I'm interested in the circle being traversed only once. Um, so it looks like it's going to go once in the interval 0 to 2 pi. So I just parameterize the circle of radius r centered at the origin and I know it's going to get traversed only once. Um, I can actually go figure that out for sure. I can do my little chart of here is theta, here is x, here is y. If theta is 0, I'm going to have cosine of 0 which is 1 so x is going to be r times 1 which is r and sine is going to be sine of 0 is 0 0 so if I'm keeping track of things let's say this is radius r my circle actually starts there based on the parameterization I've chosen you can use different ones of course and I go through my business of plugging in values. If I put pi over 2 here, cosine will be 0, so I'm going to end up with 0. Here's sine of theta, sine of pi over 2 will be 1, so I'm going to end up with r, and it looks like from there I'm going to jump to 0, r over here, and if you follow that through, when you get to 2 pi, you will have traversed the circle once. So we just came up with a circle of radius r being traversed once, um, and we're going to now try to go find the circumference of this circle. So we're going to go 0 to 2 pi to find the arc length, basically. And I have to find dx d theta and dy d theta. Well, dx d theta, not a big deal. That's r is, remember, it's not a variable. r is just a constant. It's the radius of the circle. So that's negative sine of theta when I differentiate it. So minus r sine of theta squared plus when I come over here sine theta goes to cosine theta I still have the coefficient constant r so r cosine theta squared then I do some simplification and I end up with 0 to 2 pi r squared sine squared theta plus r squared cosine squared theta d theta that's going to give me an r squared that they both have in common. And when I do that, conveniently, it looks like I get a 1 for this guy. That's going to give me the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Square root of r squared is just r, because I'm thinking of the radius of the circle, r being a positive number, r d theta. So we end up with r theta from 0 to 2 pi. And that's going to give me r times 2 pi minus 0, which is 2 pi r. So the circumference of a circle of radius r is 2 pi r. And notice it was actually quicker to get this in parametric form than it was when we dealt with using the arc length formula and finding the circumference of a circle for y as a function of x or x as a function of y. So the key thing was to be able to parametrize the circle of radius r and then just use the arc length formula to end up with 2 pi r.